Um, this might not come out very clearly, but I made another wicking pot the other day because I'm going to do a garden in one of the window wells this winter, so I need to get that started. Um, so I got this pot, for, or this soil, from a pot that has been sitting all summer. It hasn't been had anything growing in it, so there's no water. So I haven't been watering it. Well, there's something that happens when soil has been dry for a very long time. It goes hydrophobic. And it's a little difficult to see. I mean, you can see the difference. But do you see the edge right here where the soil is wet and then the soil is dry? Let me pull that back. Underneath, that soil is still bone dry. There's that little skim of water. And then underneath, it is still bone dry. So I am letting this soak and hopefully get some water up into the soil. <clears throat> this soil has gone hydrophobic, which means it does not want to accept the water that is available. And underneath, it's still dry. So, um, what I wanted to point out was that this is what happens um, in deserts, for example, like the uh, floods, the massive floods this year in Iran. Um, in a desert, when the soil has gone hydrophobic, this water does not soak in. It skims over the surface and underneath it stays dry. So when you have these massive flood events coming down off of a mountain, the water or the soil itself rejects the water. Um, unless the soil has been prepared and shaped in order to accept that water so that it can be used, the water just floods right off into the, in this case, into the, um, into the I believe it was the Red Sea. Would that be Iran? Anyway, um, it just flooded right off. Um, not, very, very little of that water actually soaks in and hydrates the soil. So what you have to do in a case like this, now, now in this case, I'm just feeding it a little bit at a time through the pipe and um, those, their well underneath is full. So um, that water is going to wick up into the soil because it has time to overcome that um, natural resistance of the very dry soil. Um, but in a natural environment where you're not in, you don't have a tub and a reservoir underneath, you have to keep that soil, keep that water on the soil long enough to overcome that hydrophobic resistance. And this can cause lakes, it can cause ponds, it can cause rivers, but you've got to keep that water on the soil. There are a lot of different processes that are used, from swales and berms to um, key line plowing, but whatever it is, you have to keep that water on the soil um, and not allow it to run off because otherwise you end up with these massive flood events and then no water for the next year because these flood events are the water supply for these areas and because they have um, abandoned their old processes because they've gone almost entirely western um, their soil has no resistance and no um, no catchment in place um, to gather this water and collect it down into the soil because your best catchment area is not a reservoir and it's not a lake and it's not a river and it's not an ocean your best catchment area is the soil and if your catchment area is full then your plants will be able to use that water and well in an area like this you won't be watering as much but in other areas, sometimes they don't have to water at all because there is plenty of water in the soil from the winter or from the rainy season. I will talk with you later.